this is like the Eddie Maloof show. You've got people coming on board. They're psyched to learn about AdWords. There's no agenda. Again, this is your kingdom. I'll just turn off and I'll be here if need be, okay? Oh, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> can I make it a requirement for everyone to put their cameras on or is that not a thing in here? You do whatever you genuinely feel is best. Feel free to kick out uh, whoever doesn't. It's up there to we you. go. There we go, Neil. That's hey. what I like to see, man. If, if you guys got a camera, turn them on. It makes it a lot more personal. It makes me kind of get to know you guys. If we're going to do this weekly, I might as well uh, start building a relationship. But uh, since look, since you're the only one with the camera, bro, you got any questions on Google specifically to your business or anything like that that we can kind of jump into? Uh, me? Um, not really, no. Uh, just kind of, yeah, just here to kind of get ideas, really. Um, what do you do? Uh, well, uh, gyms and martial arts schools and things, mainly, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all over the U.S. or outside of the U.S. too? The U.S., yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and what, what's the offer that you're running for most of these guys? Uh, free week. Um, actually, yeah, one, one client I have, this, which is um, from a different niche, is uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Um, we were doing Google ads for them, but um, yeah, it's really hard to get ads approved for them. So I don't know if you've got any um, experience in that niche, do you? Yeah, I mean, I try to stay away from stuff like that, like Forex, cryptocurrencies. Um, I've gotten maybe three business managers on Facebook banned and a bunch of Google AdWords accounts banned. And I just kind of just stay away from those, um, those kind of businesses, to be honest. Um, yeah. Like, and, and, and just to tell you, like, the first time I had a, a client like that, they were spending $70,000 a day and we we're getting a percent of ad spend. So this is like a huge client at the time, the biggest I've ever had by far. Um, and looking back, the money was cool, but looking back the damage that it caused to my accounts and my profiles and everything like that is totally not worth it. And here I am three years later, I still haven't recovered from it. I've had to, you know, use my mom's account or my wife's account for ads and things like that too. So, well, um, man. just on every platform, not just Google, like Google, Facebook, anything you can think of, they're really strict on anything monetary like that. Okay. Um, so try to avoid yeah. that but the gym space i think would be a really good one for you man especially on youtube ads right yeah yeah that's something i'm planning to to try yeah yeah for what kind of targeting do you do then is it the same type of targeting as we do for facebook then is it kind of um yeah like broad and just targeting an area kind of a thing or yeah um you're not going to be broad because you're you're probably going to waste a, a lot of money um first tell me what kind of gyms you target um, like, are they martial arts gyms? Are they like actual workout gyms, CrossFit gyms? Yeah, martial arts mainly. Yeah. yeah. So, kids are your main market, or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you'd probably want to target the moms. I assume would probably be the person you're targeting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, very simple. I would like you can do open targeting to moms like that, like parents of kids a certain age within a certain area who make a certain kind of money, same as Facebook. Um, even, even a little more. And I think it's much more accurate in my opinion. That's one approach. Um, but there's another approach, which I'm hoping someone from the group who was asking this question, I told him to get on this call because I think I could help him. There's another approach called custom affinity. It's a little bit more advanced, uh, but I'll show it today at some point. And you can basically take a list of keywords, you know, martial arts school for my kids or best activities for kids. You can come up with a list of keywords that parents would search for, for these kinds of schools. Um, and then target people on YouTube for the next 21 days who have searched this anywhere on any device they've ever had anytime the last three weeks. Um, so when it gets to harder targeting like that, I always use that kind of strategy um, because you can target people like if you know someone has searched a martial arts school in the last three weeks, then you're going to have no problem getting that person as a, as a customer. Everyone on Google is, is mainly fighting for the people that search. So you, you want to think of it as like a marketplace and most of the people, uh, whether they're experienced or inexperienced are spending their efforts trying to target people on the first look that they possibly can. Someone searches martial arts, everyone's paying top dollar to be the first guy on that list. But most people don't search martial arts and, and in, in any general demographic, most people don't shop for something, click it one time and buy it right away because it's not like an e-commerce product. It's a service. So there's a lot more vetting that goes into it. Do I like the instructor? Do they have good reviews online? There's so much more to it. So the buying process, um, I can just take care of that. 
um, the buying, the buying process, um, is, is longer than just a day and everyone's competing all their money on that first day. But if you can outsmart them, you can take these keywords, you can spend two cents of you, one cent of you on, on YouTube, and you can target people over the next 21 days from them searching a term. And your, your martial arts places are just the guys that are the videos. Every time they get on an ad, they see a video from a martial arts guy. Then they get on another ad two days later. It's the same guy. Again, they are already looking for martial arts. So if you are the guy on that video, not you, but the customer, mm -hmm. then they can easily get some traction. Cool. And something, something in YouTube ads, um, sorry, I'm just rambling, but I just want to make sure you no, kind of see the full perspective. Yeah, something on YouTube ads that's cool is like, if you can get your guys to talk right to a camera on their phone, it's much more engaging than a Facebook ad because their entire screen is this and they are there to watch. They're not scrolling. So besides them skipping, they're going to be actively engaged in the ad, number one. And number two, what no one talks about is the halo effect of YouTube ads. It's essentially television, okay? So think of back in the day, Coca-Cola, all these big brands, they got really big through television. That's why they're so big now. It's not, they didn't just like exist for hundreds of years before that TV, they spent big bucks on ads and that's why they're here. And I'll tell you right now, if within a few miles, your guys are running open targeting to moms within a few miles, I guarantee 30, 60 days in, everyone that is a mom is gonna know who this martial arts studio is. It has a much stronger effect than Facebook because they're forced to engage with it. You know what I mean? Even if they skip five seconds in, they know who this guy is. Hey, you know, right. hey, what's up, man? It's Neil from uh, from John's from, I don't know, Neil's martial arts studio here. You know what I mean? And just starting like that is already branding. And you're only going to get charged if you watch past a certain point. So all these people that skip, you're not getting charged for them. You're getting charged for the people that engage. Cool. Hope yeah. that helps. Yeah. What did you say there about um, on, on, like you should get the client to record it on their phone? What was the... What do you say about that bit? Yeah, just get, I mean, just get a client to pick up their phone and, and hold it like this. Yeah. Um, and, and just write a script for your clients and you can have all the clients record the same video. You all know, right. hey, this is Neil from X, X Martial Arts Studios. Do you have kids and are you trying to find, you know, innovative ways to, to keep them, to keep them being active, but also, um, because look, at the, at the end of the day, I'll tell you right now what every mom's biggest problem is. I guarantee it, it's the same problem across the board when it comes to athletics and sports. All their kids are indoors, especially because of COVID. They've been playing video games heavily or they've been attached to some sort of screen and kids are having much more trouble going and wanting to play sports or wanting to go and be active, whether it's go to the gym or whatever it is that they used to do. So if you can play on that key through a YouTube video to the parents, and because I guarantee, I guarantee you every mom that watches a video and you say, are you having trouble motivating your kid to go out and do exercise and do it well i have like one of the most fun solutions where kids can you know express the same energy they are in their video games but in real life you know and and get the sort of activity and discipline and, and these things and if you can solve that problem dude in 15 seconds you know and just tell the person stay with me at the end you know i'm gonna make sure i get you a free pass to to come in and and have your kid try it out and, and get them attached to that sort of activity and get them away from their screens and i don't know what i assume you're doing like a free offer or something like a free trial or yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can just push that free trial. But if you pick on that pain point from a YouTube perspective on a mom, dude, you will you will crush. And it's the same script for everyone across the country because they're targeting locally. So if you write a script like that, two or three scripts, and you test them out, test them with like three or four clients, how they do. If they do well, boom, dude, push them to the rest of your client list and just tell them, hey, you can either upsell them on YouTube ads or you can just use it to as another way to keep the clients. Um, but I think YouTube is... It's hard to do, which is why people don't do it. Um, but it's very slept on. It has the power of TV. It really is. Re it's replaced television at the end of the day from an attention span. Cool. Um, yeah. 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 Hope that helps. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Thanks very much. Of course, man. Cheers. Anyone else got questions? You got to put your camera on if you want to ask a question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make today a Q&A day to gauge kind of where the group's at um, so that weekly maybe I can start planning lessons ahead of time. He's coming back. I know he is. David, I'll let you go first, man. What's up? What do you do? Um, right now I'm doing like pressure washers and that sort of stuff. Like, so working home services. Mm -hmm. and you just caught my attention because I, I literally launched my first YouTube ad yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, and haven't seen a whole lot of action yet. Um, but uh, I, I noticed, like, I look at the analytics today. There was a lot of TV activity, and I'm 
well, is wondering if that is something I want to remove just because they can't click on the landing page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I remove those kind of placements, yeah. So just, just leave like tablet, mobile phone, and, and computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll notice YouTube ads will also run as display ads, so you can remove those too. So uh, like when people play video games on their phones and things like that, sometimes like ads will pop up. I, I usually remove those um, just because, you know, it'll make it look like you're getting like hundreds of thousands of impressions for so cheap. But what you don't realize, it's just someone trying to play a free game over and over and over right, again. So that was dis display ads. Um, yeah, you can go into your placements and you'll see it'll be like hundreds of random sites that your ads are appearing on. You know what I mean? And, and video, you'll see app, this game, whatever. Um, I would remove all those. Now, how, how about the intro for a local business? I mean, I've been researching a lot of this and some people say, hey, show a local landmark as your first screen to paint yourself as a local. Is there anything to that? Um, honestly, I've never done something like that. I've I've never even have a, had a need to take it that far. But like you, you, you got to, um, I mean, local landmark is still its perspective of who the person is. Some people know these local landmarks and most people don't in reality. Like, I don't know, if someone went to like the county courthouse, I would have no clue what that is. And I bet you my parents probably would even have no clue what that is either. Uh, unless it's like the Eiffel Tower and you're in Paris kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't foresee the local landmark being um and thank you by the way for everyone that has their cameras on i really appreciate it um the the local cameras i don't i mean the local uh, landmarks i don't think it's going to be as valuable as what you're actually saying what you're yeah, saying that, that was the other school well, one guy was teaching that another guy was teaching say what you do immediately so they can click the skip ad if you're not relevant so you don't get charged for it mm -hmm. um i would i would and, and actually uh, i'm not going to search because i don't want to waste people's time now but after this, if it's cool with Jeff, I actually did a uh, entire presentation on YouTube ads um, to uh, like a conference that I was uh, that I was a speaker at, and I went through like the five things every YouTube ha ad should have in the exact order that they should be in, like how you should open, what the next thing you should say is, and then Sign what you should. Up. Yeah, so I'll um I'll I'll send it over to Jeff for approval, and then we can post it in the group. But I think that's that should like solve all these problems of how to talk. But what I always do is I call out the person right away. Um, once once I call out the person, I tell them what they're going to get by watching the video right away. So like you you say, you know, uh, hey, are you a homeowner in, you know, Jacksonville, Florida? Um, well, uh, if, you, if you give me 30 seconds of your time, I'm going to X, Y, Z. And so now they're like, oh, OK, I'm going to get this at the end of this video. It's worth listening for 30 seconds, too. Um, and then so call out what you're going to get and then move yeah, on. Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what it was because I, I really put a lot of time into it. But I think it was like, you know, call out your customer, give them a reward at the end or promise them something at the end. Educate them so that you're like the authority on the call because like at the end of the, or on the video, because at the end of the day, you pitching them is like not as cool as like you teaching them something that's cool. Right. In regards to whatever your pressure washing business is, I'm sure you got some things that business owners can do without having to hire you. And they'll go outside to their house and they'll be like, that's that thing the guy was talking about. That That's a really cool idea that worked in my house. Like this guy is like he, he knows what he's talking about at the end of the day. So if you position yourself as that and then give them that call to action at the end, there's one more step in there and I'll get that presentation. But generally, that's the idea. You call them out, you introduce yourself, you give or sorry, you call them out. You give them something at the end, you introduce yourself, you educate them, and then you give them a call to action at the end and fulfill that promise that you gave them at the beginning. And you should knock it out the park with, with YouTube ads. But, yeah, but I tell you, in your business, search is probably way more valuable than YouTube, at least from a direct conversion standpoint. Well, what's happening with search with AdWords? I mean, these guys, you know, they're, they're running Google ads. Now, I don't run Google ads, but they're telling me they're, they're getting calls that are costing them 50 to $125. Yeah. Where do you live at? Well, it just depends. We're talking like Florida, Texas. Like I focus on the states that run those industries year round, you know? Yeah. So, but I'm um, like you in general, where's your business? Pennsylvania. Located? Okay. But that's where you pressure wash, right? Is, is Pennsylvania? I don't. I, I, I do marketing for pressure washers. Oh, you market. Okay. Okay. I got you. Okay. So I, I, I would disagree with whatever they're telling you because um, Google ads is going to be the biggest force of pressure washers. At the end of the day, I, I can guarantee if you ask everyone in this call, if they need someone to pressure wash their house, the first place they're going is searching on Google. Like not many people know a pressure washer. 
You know what I mean? It's not like my friends like, Oh yeah, I got, I got a guy who pressure washes. Like, no, once you got your pressure wash guy, then he's your pressure wash guy. But everyone needs to search to find their pressure wash guy and Google even dude, even if you're paying, you know, $300 to acquire a customer at a loss, like pressure washing is not like a one-time thing. They're going to have to come back in two months, three months, six months, whatever it is, depending on where they live. I, yep. I agree with that. But you try and get these guys <laughs> to buy into lifetime value. It's yeah, hard. No, I understand. That's probably the hardest part of, of working with these guys at the end of the day is just getting them to buy into that. But I think you can be very profitable on the front end. Um, and the way you do it is not by just targeting pressure washers. You target longer keywords like, um, you know, best pressure washer in, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, you know what I mean? Or best pressure washer in this County and in this city and best pressure washer near me. And you, you try to make them longer phrases, your, your click costs will go down from maybe $10 a click, just an example to a dollar 50 a click, because everyone's trying to compete on the broad term of pressure washer or pressure wash near me and things like this, where if you can get a little bit more defined, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like pressure washers for driveways or um, pressure washers for uh, exterior on homes and, and get a little bit more detailed, then I think you can pull in a lot better traffic. And just think about the difference between a guy who's just searching pressure washer versus a guy who's like, um, you know, what's the best way to pressure wash the outside of my house? And you're the first guy um, that that makes a world of a difference. So like, I mean, that's how we operate as an agency. Even we primarily focus on like high intent keywords um, because those guys are going to be the best. And honestly, I would just give them like, like just imagine like three Google ads for pressure washers. And two of them are talking about how awesome the company is. And one is saying, you know, here's our guarantee. And here's, you know, 50 bucks off your first pressure wash. Like I'm clicking on that one. You take them to a landing page. They fill out a form for 50 bucks off a pressure wash. You know, they came from Google because that landing page is only for Google traffic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then now, now your customers, you can track and be like, dude, uh, we got you, you know, or what do you use to track like customer calls and stuff like that? I, high level. For high level. Perfect. So like, do you record their calls? Yeah, well, see right now I'm doing everything. Everything I'm doing right now is pretty much Facebook messenger, but I'm just diversifying. I just started doing YouTube ads and, Cause like, well, Facebook is yeah. a, for lack of a better word. Facebook is a shit show right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think it'll always be a shit show. Um, I'll, I'll tell everyone in here, listen, if you're using go high level, record every client call, like activate that setting ASAP. We've saved so many clients. They'll try to leave us because business owner doesn't know as much as everyone else knows inside the business. Everyone else inside the business just talks to business owner says, Oh, these leads suck, blah, 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 blah. And then business owner says, you guys are fired. Um, you know, we're not, we're not getting great leads. And then we go through the last 30 days and we pull up 15 phone calls of people begging for them to take their credit card. And, you know, they actually signed up and they just think they magically came through. And now we're like, Hey dude, listen to these 10 recordings. These are customers that came in valued at X, Y, Z amount. Like, how can you say the leads are bad? Or how can you say an average phone call of 10 minutes is a bad lead? Uh, in your case for like pressure washing, some people might not make a decision right there. Um, you got to find a way to, to give these guys a script of FOMA, whether it's for that, for that offer, for example, or schedule is booked out at a certain time. I only have Thursday at 2 PM, whatever it is, but providing a mix of FOMO. And then from your end, as, as the agency owner, some sort of backup to be able to audit these guys, um, by listening to their calls within high level is going to be a game changer for you, but you should get into search. Um, and maybe what we'll do next week. Um, now that I've kind of gauged the crowd, maybe next week we'll actually go through and like build out some campaigns for someone in here. Um, maybe I'll get access to a couple ad accounts beforehand and then we'll go together and we'll build out some campaigns so everyone can kind of see how we're building them and what we're looking for and things like that. And then I'll let you guys on the back end figure out where to put the pixel codes and things like that. Um, and I think that'll probably be a good foundation. So uh, if you want to do it for you, David, next week, just a uh, message in the thread uh, yep. the Facebook group okay. under my name. And then uh, we can we can uh, figure out how to, how to make that happen. Thank you. I'm cool. in. I'm in. Cool. Um, I know. Where is he? Talberly, you had your camera on after David, and you were going to ask a question. Do you still have a question? Yeah. Uh, occasionally, I get uh, social anxiety. Something I'm working with, but it is what it is, and whatever. Um, hey, only way to overcome it is to put the camera on, man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, we, we have a guy in the office who's, who's the same way i make him sit in front of me we share a desk so 
But anyways, I'm, thanks for putting your camera on. I appreciate it. Well, anyway, I got a question, like, in regards to Google Ads. Like, will there be training on that? Because, um, I don't know, like, like it, I've been hearing a lot of things about Facebook and shutting down ad accounts and whatnot. And, and I'd rather, you know, do Google Ads instead because, like you mentioned in the, the thread, that uh, it's, it's far more effective for contractors and et cetera. Um, and maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it and et cetera, but um, would it be a training for Google Ads? Um, I think next week's coaching call will probably be a good foundation for that. I'll teach you guys how to read the dashboard. I'll teach you how to build some campaigns, teach you how to do keyword research, pretty much everything you need to know to at least launch a campaign and uh, get some things off the ground. You're not going to become an expert overnight, but um, definitely next week's call, I think will be enough to have everyone who attends it be able to go launch their own ads, track the metrics that they need to, and just make that as, uh, as best as possible. So uh, I would definitely attend that one. Uh, but I'll tell you in the contracting space, Facebook still works very well. Um, as long as you have a good landing page, it's all about the landing page and uh, make sure you have the phone number on the ads. Uh, I know from the contracting space in Facebook, a lot of people just like these kind of people that want contracting work in their house, like a basin refinish and things like that. They want to just call. They don't want to fill out a form. They hate filling out a form. And once you go back after you do it for a few months on Google and Facebook and involve more phone numbers all over the place, then you can really gauge and compare the guys who are calling and how much their jobs are worth versus the people who are applying and what their closing rate is and what their jobs are worth. And you'll notice that the people who are um, calling in are the ones that are by far spending the most uh, because they just they just want to get on the phone and kind of get it out the way rather than applying and waiting and things like that. So. When we do the when we do the stuff next week, remind me to you know specifically talk about call only ads on Google because on Google you can do ads that are just phone call only. You can't click to a website, and maybe you've seen them on your phone where you can like you search something and then the first ad has a massive phone next to it, uh, and then just some text and you know those are super effective ads and you can track how long the calls are as well. So you can see in your Google Ads Manager, you know how long these calls are on average. Um, so that when the client, you know, says the calls are bad, you can be like, dude, like these calls are two and a half minutes long. Like they didn't just call and like hang up. Like you guys are having some serious conversations here. So um, yeah, just for remind sure. me to talk about that. I think that'll be a big point for the contracting space. And the one thing I was thinking about, because like, um, I think my focus has been like divided across multiple yeah. spectrums. So I was thinking about just focusing on um, prospecting and reviewing the prospecting videos. Um, like that's where I've been recorded within the course. And then afterwards, um, you know, that's why I ask you if we plan to do like a Google ads training and see if that's recorded. Cause I want to focus on setting appointments and closing appointments um, and dedicate that time towards that. And another thing, I don't know everything about advertising, but it seemed like, you know, everyone heading from like Facebook to Google and YouTube, I think it's like um, solving a, a symptom of the root problem. I, I feel like the root problem is that like, there's no ownership of like, of the platform itself it's like it's like being at the mercy of someone else always and you know like is there any type of form of online advertising where like i'm in complete control where you know an ad account can say like where an ad account can't be shut down by facebook google youtube because that's like a uh it's a problem that i prefer not to have you know what i mean like recurring problem i, I don't like that problem yeah uh unfortunately it doesn't exist the only thing is is emails and phone numbers and and even anything outside of that is not owned by you even your own social media following is not owned by you instagram the next day can ban your account my brother has a blue check and doesn't post anything but he gets reported by so many people because of his name um uh, they all want his name and they all report him thousands of people and his account still gets taken down so even that following he doesn't own so um just make it a conscious effort for all your clients and yourself to collect emails and phone numbers and store them somewhere and actively re-engage these people. Uh, because in times where an ad account is down, you can run a really cool promotion on an email blast or a text blast. And the client won't even know the ad accounts are down because there's so many leads coming in from previous customers or uh, from people who applied and never actually bought anything. So um, I, I think, you know, as, as agency owners in general, all of us uh, kind of neglect the power of the emails and the SMS on the back end, And we're so focused on like generating leads. But when you work with a guy for months and now he has 400 leads and he's a thousand old customers and you can put them all on a list and send them an email with a promotion or send them a text with a promotion. 
um, you'd be surprised how many people will fill out a form or call the number and they'll be booked out for weeks, um, especially in the contracting space, dude. Like it takes like four jobs and these guys are booked out for an entire month and a half. You know what I mean? So um, the power of that is just so strong. So the only traffic you'll ever own, you know, don't don't think your even your own profile is your own traffic. It's not. It can be shut down at any point. But an email list and a text messaging list of contacts will never go anywhere. You always have it stored on your computer, on your phone, anywhere you want. And there's always going to be a way to send them out. So um, I hope that's insightful for you. But I, I would take that. I would take that advice very seriously because it's very powerful. Awesome. Thank you. It sounds like you says like like said I, I should focus like a bit more on the email marketing because that, that sounds like the only thing I can actually legitim legitimately control. You know. Um, yeah. But to get the email marketing, you have to run the traffic to acquire those customers, right? And get those leads. So uh, think about how easy it is from your end as a business owner, if all your clients are using go high level and now you have, you know, let's just say 20 clients, okay? 20 clients are all contractors. They're all over the US, all these things. If you have some sort of promotion or some sort of email that works, all you can do is just type it up one time like you do with an ad and then send it on 20 accounts at the same time to all their customer base. And now they're just absolutely flooded with, with business. So I'm not saying, you know, shift all your attention to how can I make email marketing and text messaging work. But what I'm saying is in times where there are downs on other traffic sources like Facebook and Google and things like that, you need to mitigate that by, by you're basically insuring yourself with a client by having their email list and SMS list ready to be able to send something out and get that sort of reaction. And if you don't act, if you don't send stuff out often and you send something out, you'll probably get a lot of traction on your first time because they've never seen an email from you and they want to open it up and see what's inside. So that's more what I'm saying. You're still going to have to depend on these traffic sources to build that list, but your customer base also already has their own list of past people they've worked with. So even if the email is a referral email where you're sending out a referral email and saying, you're going to give a thousand dollars to anyone that refers someone to a contracting business, you know what I mean? Like even that's a huge deal for people. They're getting a grant and a check just to say, yeah, I have a friend. I think you can probably talk to him. So um, use it as a supplement and as something where you can fill in when things are low, if that makes sense. Don't depend on it. Is there like any other like um, like copywriting services or create like a product side service of really copywriting really or like email marketing? Because like Jeff has some great copywriting courses, if I remember from his master because classes. Like, because there's like some personal like life experiences where things always like um, you know when I, when whenever uh i gave control to another person it, it wasn't in my best interest and i experienced some very shitty situations and i don't like that and so i was trying to figure out um since you guys been in space way longer than i've been and you guys seen a couple of things i'm hoping you guys can like you know point and direct to other things if that makes sense yeah i got you. because like it, we have we have the storytelling master class and the soap opera sequence master class um it's not called storytelling. It's like the soap opera sequence masterclass done by Danny Velez. He and I started around the same time. I think he's doing like 30, 40 K a month just by copywriting, literally like emails. That's it. Um, the way I drove $10,000 bike sales was through great storytelling with an email. And there's the who worksheet, there's samples and examples. It's the whole process they can go through. Just look up the storytelling or soap opera sequence masterclass, walk through it, and it'll get you zero to like 80 to 90% copywriter probably three or four days solid that's dope uh thank you so much yeah. thank you so much both of you appreciate you man thanks for putting your camera on and talking who else has any questions that i can answer about google is anyone here actually running google ads yet or no give me a, you are ronaldo chime in bro well what kind of business do you have oh uh, you're muted hey sorry about that yeah so we have, have um so we're primarily doing Facebook ads, but right now we have a, a friend, his dad owns a commercial cleaning company. Mm -hmm. So right now I have um, an ad up going to an opt-in page and it's just normal um, commercial cleaning service keywords using um, phrase and exact match. Mm -hmm. um, the objective right now is maximize clicks. So we're getting a ton of clicks, but no conversion. So it's kind of like what I mentioned in the, Facebook posts a few days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, do you mind sharing your screen and opening up your account? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I have a ton of tabs up, but let me close them. 
So I, I've ran a ton of ads in the past and I've had good amount of convergence. Like I'm running one now for a, um, um, they do, what's the, what's the word for it? Trend shoring. You ever hear that? Trend shoring. I've, I've never yeah, heard They that build term. trench I'm boxes. Sure so that one's converting. Okay. So that one's boxes. converting well. I can share my screen right now. Yeah. Artifacts around the side. So one of the pieces I have to give you okay, cool. All right, where do you want me to jump into? Uh, go to campaigns on the left side. Okay. And then, yeah, click that. Things like that. But a lot of times, the way you want transfer. Okay. Are you sure that conversions are being tracked correctly on your landing page and everything like that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Did you need to see the landing page at all? Uh, yeah, if you could just open that up, that'd be awesome too. You have a get a free quote that goes to a pop up. Mm -hmm. They get a chance to call. We've had three calls already, but uh, the business has a bad habit of not picking up. Okay. It goes to voicemail. So there's does it does it call their high level number? Yeah. Okay. So when a business, this is for everyone. Um, I don't know if anyone's doing this. Super big nugget. When a business gets called through their high level number by a customer, and the business doesn't answer send a text message. You can automate this in high level as a trigger. You can send a text message from the business to the customer saying, Hey, it's X, you know, whatever the business owner's name. Hey, it's John. Um, sorry, I missed your call. Um, you know, give me, uh, shoot me a text if you want, it's easier. Uh, and I'll get, I'll, I'll get, I'll give you a call back as soon as I can. You know what I mean? And then now it engages the customer over a text message and gives the business owner the opportunity to then call them back later rather than just calling. And then business owner forgets about it. You're automating a text from the business owner's behalf to them, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Okay, That's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. So we, we, we've had the same problem in our business and being able to do something like that and, and have them get texted from the business owner. I, I mean, we even put like, we're, we're like, I don't want to go too extreme with you, but like we put like, Hey, uh, you know, give me a call back, uh, whenever you get the chance. Sorry, I got caught up. And then I put the number again so that they call them back again. But it sounds like your guys are just really bad at picking up. So I wouldn't put the number again to call back then, but I would say like, text me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. Uh, but I mean, this landing page isn't bad. Let's keep scrolling through. So it's all the basics, you know, testimonials. See our work. They don't really have much images of them doing any work, but yeah, a couple of testimonials from their uh, GMB. Yeah. Um, what's uh? How how do these contracts work? Are they like uh like are they long term contracts? Are they month to month? How do they sign these guys up? This company does either one time or contracts, okay. so it's all customizable. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, a uh, free quote might be um, very common of an offer from everyone else. Um, consult with these guys and see if it's possible to offer um, an offer on the front end. That's, you know, uh, get your first month of cleaning free. But when they get on the call, it's like, Hey, if you buy three months, we'll give you know, we'll give you the first month free. You pay for two essentially. Um, and, and you're getting a month free, but what it does is at least gets them to actually get on the call with the person. And then from there, the business owner can kind of navigate how they want to take the conversation. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Need commercial cleaning, get expert cleaning services. Um, Google ads are much different than Facebook ads. Okay. So from a copywriting perspective, you don't want to ask questions. Okay. okay. You want to give answers. So Facebook, you want to ask questions to call out the person. That's the purpose. So on Facebook, you say, you know, have dust or dirt problems, question mark. And then someone reading, it's like, oh yes, I do. But on Google, someone has already searched something about dust and dirt problems. So the reason they're even on this page is because they have these problems already. So don't um, try not to lead with questions. I would lead with credibility. You know what I mean? And, and, and quite frankly, um, you know, 
uh, you can get super particular. So like, where is this person based out of again? Is it New Jersey, New Jersey and New York city. Okay. Um, uh, I like NYC and NJ's number one commercial cleaning service. Oh, so it's all a credibility about the business. There's no benefit. Towards there is benefit benefit. I mean, that is the benefit to the customer. They want to know who, who they, who they trust to work with the most. Gotcha. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So put in, put in, you know, what the, instead of, instead of the question, you need to put what the solution is, what the business's credibility is and how the customer uh, is going to benefit by clicking them rather than someone else. For example, like I said, you know, uh, claim, claim your first month free, for example, claim your business's first month free. That totally will get them to click, totally fill out a form. They got them to call the business. Yeah, we saw this offer. Great. Mm-hmm. You know, let me tell you about our services before we jump into that. They sell them on everything. And then at the end, they say, you know, if you sign up for a three month package, you get the first month free. Um, you're basically, you're paying for the, for the second and third month, essentially is what you're paying for. Um, okay. So that, that's one thing I, I would try to change. Uh, because you see your click-through rates are 2% um, in, in Google. You want to be like above a four or five. Uh, it's a little bit different than Facebook because it's much more higher intent. So like when we want to be super aggressive with our campaigns, like anything under a 7% is bad. Um, so 1.76, 2.06, um, people just aren't vibing with the ad itself. I would make I would make more ads for sure, more variations. Okay. Um, and look into, uh, go press plus on the ad real quick, the blue button. Okay, see responsive search ad. Mm -hmm. So this is like a dynamic ad in Facebook where you can make 10 headlines, 10 images, different descriptions like this. Okay, cool. Gotcha, okay, yeah. And and let it pick for itself based on what people are searching. So if someone searches dust and dirt problems, then it'll probably pick that headline. And then something really cool that you can do, you see the little pin on the right side at the end of the line? You can pin any of these headlines to be in every ad, no matter what. Oh, uh, okay, cool. So instead of just randomly mixing and you want, you know, 500 five-star reviews to be on every ad, you can pin it to position one, two, or three out of your headlines. And then it'll always put it there, no matter what. Okay. So you can do a lot here. This is definitely where, if I were you, I would start between this week and next week's call. I would add responsive search ads. And, and here's what you're going to base them on. Let's go back real quick. Uh, go to um, ad groups. Actually, yeah, keywords is fine. Go to keywords. Okay, and go to search terms. Do you ever click on this? Yeah, that's where I do uh, negative matches nice. when once comes in. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, cool. So we're on the same page here. So you want to base your responsive search headlines on these keywords here. Okay. Because these are what people are searching for. Now let's go down. Uh, stop there. Okay, like. Commercial cleaning tools, you should remove that as a negative keyword, for example. Right. Because okay. these people are, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I would yeah. go through this list and, and try to find um, these things that you want to remove. Best cleaning companies, like that's that's definitely not something. Those people are searching for house cleaning. I guarantee it. You know what I mean? 95% of people, they're just going to put best cleaning companies. They're not, they're, commercial people are going to put best commercial cleaning or best business cleaning and things like that. So Try to find these keywords and stay away from them. And then at the same time, you want to go back and filter this by impressions. So like click impressions at the top and yeah, and just have it trend downwards. Nice. And then you can see which ones are actually being searched the most. And you should include these keywords in your headlines and in your descriptions. Oh, gotcha. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Done. And then as, as we figure this out and, you know, you finally get more conversions out of these because things are aligning more. So if someone's searching for something, they're seeing the same word again. And then, and then again, then we'll subdivide these into like two or three different audiences. And then we can make a different ad for each audience matching what the audience is searching. And the next step down the road would be to make three variations of the landing page and have the headline of the page be different based on what people are searching. So when people are searching through Google, they search something, you say it back to them, it mirrors them. They say, okay, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. This guy just wrote it back to me. Then they go to a landing page. Oh, it's here again at the top of the page, this thing that I was searching for. Now your entire process is aligned. 
but the shortest way to get there is to use these search terms, take them to the responsive search ads. And you can see the cost per click on these, like seven bucks, six bucks, they're pretty high. Yeah. Um, I guarantee on the responsive search ads, it'll be less than this. You might be hitting four bucks, three bucks uh, per click because it's giving Google the option to pick which ad they want to go for. Okay. How long do you stay with the responsive search ads? Dude, um, we still have responsive search ads running on accounts that we've been managing for three years. So we do both. We do normal search and responsive search. Sometimes one outperforms the other, but usually, you know, you'll get to a point where they're both profitable and you're trying to scale them individually. Okay. Yeah, so don't give up on it. Okay. Am I good with sticking with uh, maximized clicks or should I do that? Change it to conversions. Um, I would change it to conversions after you have like 10 or 15 conversions. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not like Facebook where you need like 50 a week and things like this. Right. Um, so that's a good news. Also, you know, on Facebook, when you do dynamic ads like this, the downside is you lose all the engagement. Like you can't like copy existing post IDs and yeah. use the same ad in multiple places in Google. There's no engagement. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You just want Google to find the people that are most relevant to that. So okay. Hope, hope that helps. I think all you, right. got, no, totally. you got a very good foundation for sure. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. Anyone else I can help with anything? Also for the question someone asked, what do you say about copywriting, Jeff? Jeff was talking about the master classes that you guys have access to uh, in the program about like soap sequences uh, and things like that um, to kind of get ahead on the copywriting side of things. I think Jeff's one of the best copywriters I know. So um, I think I think definitely worth looking into those. Hey man, what's going on? It's um, Drew. I don't know if you can see me on your screen. I can see you, bro. What's up? Yeah, no much. I'm actually in the contracting space as well, particularly roofers. Um, it's been my main niche. Uh, mm-hmm. We've been mostly focused on Facebook. Uh, okay. And I've been entertaining the idea of Google just to add, uh, you know, extra variation. I just know like with contractors is really responsive for customers to type in, you know, best roofers in their area or whatever. So um, I guess my question is, how, how much should I allocate or tell them is a healthy number for me for running ads for them? Um, because right now for Facebook, we're doing about a thousand a month for ad spend, but I know Google is more, which is why I haven't like explored that idea just yet. Yeah. I mean, if they're roofers, if that's what they do, yeah, uh, I think asking for another 500 bucks a month to use Google is a good foundation. Okay. Um, I don't think it's that much because at the end of the day, let's say they spend three months on Google at 500 bucks a piece and then one person buys and they are profiting on that job still at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So yeah. 500 bucks is not a big risk. Uh, but how I would present it to them is like, listen, yeah. you know, I've got, I've got some recent education on Google ads. I've talked to a few other people that are, that are doing well in the space in Google ads. And I think it's our next step to benefiting. Um, you know, I'm by no means an expert and I'm not going to charge you any more to do this. Um, I think we just need 500 bucks more of budget. And I'm, I'm very familiar with how we need to start and get this thing going. But over the next few months, we'll polish it, we'll get it better. And at the end of the day, you know, if, if even we get a couple jobs in the next three months from spending this money, it's still a massive positive ROI. But our goal here is to figure it out so that we can spend thousands on Google every month and make sure that we're getting jobs from it. You know what I mean? That's the approach I would take. All right, because I'm completely new to the whole Google world thing for the ads. So I was writing down what you're saying, responsive ads, normal search. And I think what I've heard most likely would work the best is on the call ads, like where they yeah. would be like the call search ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I would assume that that would be cheaper and easier to kind of implement and just kind of create like a one liner that says, you know, um, you know, uh, free estimate or free inspection or financing available or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know. I know a lot of roofers give like, like gift cards and stuff for people letting them like, you know, get a gift card for, for letting us just come out and do an estimate. And if they go to the estimate, they say, you know, if you do the job today, we've got a $300 Amazon gift card for you. If you sign here and here and here, I know most of these guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you're going after the same roofers. Um, but most of these guys like look for storm damage of some sort. Right. And then they basically track that down and use that as the excuse to get in the door because then the customer doesn't pay anything out of pocket and the insurance covers all of it. If not 99%, you know what I mean? Are you, are, is that who you're talking to mainly? Um, customers like that. Well, some of them do. Some of them are storm chasers. Some of them use, you know, softwares like Hail Trace and stuff like that to find yeah. out where the storms, you know, happened and to yeah. use that approach. But many of them 
are looking just for anybody who needs any type of roof replacement. Not all of them like insurance, but most yeah. of them are, 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 are loving it because some of them don't like the time frame they have to wait. And some of them just love the quick money. And then some of them don't mind doing it because they know it's for sure money. You know what I mean? Makes sense. So it's half and half. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, either way, I, I, I would say Google is definitely a huge benefit to you. Um, you want to test everything, search, call only, even even YouTube ads, honestly, on a small budget. But I think having 500 bucks a month is probably a, a good baseline starting point. Um, just to, and it's not going to magically, you're not going to turn this thing on at 15 bucks a day and, you know, have three cases the next day. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But it'll take some time, especially it's a, it's a really low budget, but like, that's definitely the bare minimum I would start with to take it seriously. Um, and then just make sure that the client is aware that you're doing this as a courtesy to mm -hmm. figure it out for them so that then you can capitalize on the back end. Cause when you present it that way it, and you clarify that this is something, you know, that I'm doing extra that I'm, I'm not going to charge you for, because I think this will help the business long-term a business owner really appreciates that. And they look at you as like, more of an honest guy rather than, oh, this is the marketing guy that just wants to take my money. For sure, for sure. All right, yeah. yeah. And then uh, is there any place you would recommend to have like keywords everywhere that I'm using? Is that a dependable source for finding out keywords that people are actually searching um, on Google? Yeah, have you heard of the keyword search planner like through Google? I have, I haven't used it very often. I've used more like Google Trends if anything. Yeah, so like for example, you know, if you yeah. click up here, um, on tools on any account you can go to keyword planner mm -hmm. uh, is where you should go and then you can go here and you can just type in a ton of keywords you can pick exactly where you want to target to see what the search traffic is and then you go um and you just target you know all the keywords that you think are good or you can just plug in a website and then from there so like let me just give you an example you know roofing um let's just do this residential roofing uh best I'm just going to keep it super broad just to show you the point. I think and then it, it's spelled wrong. Yeah. So it'll pull over here mm -hmm. and you can see like all the search traffic, average monthly searches. This is all of the U S so it's really high, but you can gauge like over what time and things like that. Like there's other tools, but like, why wouldn't I trust Google the tool that I'm actually searching on at the end of the day? You know what I mean? Um, and then you can kind of see what the bid range is for these keywords. So a lot of the times you won't be appearing for keywords and it's just because you're below the bid range on the account. So I, I leave automatic bidding on when I start. Um, but, you know, like just to give you a perspective, if you're spending $1.50 a day, you know, you're like, look at the cost per click, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, which is why I guess people are telling you to use call ads. But at the end of the day, this click, this click is still a call ad at the end of the day. Like, it's going to cost you 20 bucks to get a call clicked from the ad. You get what I'm saying? So it's still going to be expensive. It's not going to be like super cheap, but um, I, th I think you get the point. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. Thanks. There's definitely some research on there. I got to do on that. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a great niche that you're in. So uh, these guys got a lot of money and they make a ton every job. So you can afford to be more aggressive on Google. You know what I mean? Um other niches, you know, even um, even like pressure washing, let's say, like there's a lot of margin on pressure washing, but it's not thousands and thousands of dollars per job. You know what I mean? So like David has to be less aggressive on Google. Um, but then again, keyword costs will be reflected. Um, but you, you can be like super aggressive because you know that they're going to make so much money back on each job. For sure. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thanks for yeah, that. Sure thing. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm in the same space, man. I do roofing, uh, a lot of contractors, stuff like that. Uh, interior, exterior painting, roofing, windows, and siding. Uh, are you strictly going after like local roofing companies or just storm chasers? Talking to me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, going re residential, just anybody who does residential roofing. Like in your local area, or you? Or oh no, no, nationally, nationally. Okay, so you use like hail maps or hail trace or whatever and whatnot. I did a demo with them. I didn't use. It. I know some roofers who have used it, and they they do their storm chasing that way. And yeah. um, I was thinking about adding it on, but it was um, you know it's a, the budget for it at the time because everybody was we were going into winter time. When I was thinking about adding it on, it wouldn't make sense to have yeah. it during the winter time, you know. So that's why I just kind of targeted warmer states to, to, you know, to see if I can grab any guys who are still actively roofing during the winter season. 
Sure, sure, very good. Um, I guess if you want to, I don't know. I'm still in the in the in the phase of uh, signing my first five uh, clients. Uh, are you there yet? And how did you do it? Uh, yeah, so I have um, a lot of them have dropped off during the winter time, um, but I did have I have a couple guys that I have on tentative for the end of the month um, who want to start because the springtime's coming around the corner. Um, what was your exact question on that? Uh, how exactly did you get them signed up with the oh. with the easy yes offer? Oh yeah, so I just construct an offer that they needed. Like, for example, a lot of them don't have folks to answer phone calls, to field them. Um, a lot of them have issues with following up with their leads. So I either get like a VA or a call center to kind of handle that back end for them. Um, that was a big one. And then the other one was um, helping them craft an offer because they really don't know that just having a free estimate or a free inspection is just not cutting it anymore because everyone's kind of doing that. And, yeah. you know, creating an offer that's kind of juicy enough to make a customer pick them over the other competition who might be licensed or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Cool, man. Thanks. Yeah. For you guys, you should be doing a hard push in like the next few months because um, summertime's where it's at for the roofers. So for sure. you wanna, I mean, you want, you want to use that as your closing point because you know, that's, that's where they're going to make all their money. So they might as well make 10% more or even 10% more of what they're making in the summertime, you know, as majority of the income for the entire year for these guys. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any other Google questions? I know, uh, I think, uh, say it and cherry are like the last ones that haven't asked anything. Is there anything I can answer for you guys? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, actually pretty new f to do Google ads. So I don't have any questions just to listen in and to see, you know, get a feel of what, um, you know, how everyone's doing. And also, yeah. what do you service? Um, main service is dentist, but also mm -hmm. there's one uh, stem cell therapy as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, the dentist one is uh, is a good one. Um, and I know Jeff's Google My Business will help you a lot with uh, with with that actually because uh, Google My Business will tie to Google Ads, and you can now run ads for a dentist where someone can just click a button and GPS right to the dentist's store. Um, so I know for local businesses like dentists and things like that that have a storefront, Google Ads will be huge for you. When you combine it with the Google My Business stuff that Jeff's teaching, um, that's much more valuable than I think people think. Um, and, and then for stem cell, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time because I've done a lot of that. Um, you can't use the word stem cell anywhere on Google. So it has to be regenerative health, re regenerative uh, therapy. Like there's the words like that. I, I haven't done them in like a year, but um, there's words like that to basically get around stem cell. So uh, don't even try writing an ad that says stem cell because then they'll flag your account and they'll look, they'll like all eyes on you moving forward. Um, so from the beginning, look up like the other words that you can use, like regenerative health therapy and things like that. And uh, I think that'll um, just kind of avoid those mistakes before they happen. Okay, I see. Um, so for Google Ads, do you also offer um, SEO as service as well or just uh, pay ads? No, um, I mean, I don't know anything about SEO. Okay. I'm just paid ads. SEO, like again, back to Jeff's uh, Google My Business, Google My Business helps with SEO, uh, mm -hmm. having more reviews and having more people and having people manage their Google My Business and posting photos on it and things like that mm -hmm. makes it better for SEO. Mm -hmm. um, but quite frankly, think of think of Google, you know, as an entire network. And if you're the person spending money on it, your SEO will increase at the end of the day, just because Google is rewarding you for having good traffic, good conversion rates, things like this. Google can judge the traffic all the way through because they have their tracking codes. So if your site, for example, converts at 20% from a click on an ad all the way to the person actually filling out a form and Google sees that your site converts highly, they will make your things cheaper. They will make you appear more uh, paid and organically because they are able to track those numbers and see that the customers are having a good experience through your site. So mm -hmm. Uh, traffic in general, whether it's Facebook or Google or whatever, will help you naturally on SEO. Uh, I just don't know much about SEO and backlinks and, and all these things to give you any sort of guidance. It's probably worth it. Okay, got it. Um, 
Yeah. So I think you touched base a little bit on the、um, keywords. So you usually do your research on Google Planner, right?、Mm -hmm. And、yeah. then I know there's some、uh, other type of pay、um, tools for keyword research. Yeah.、Um, you think it's worth to invest in those tools as well to get better keywords or no? Um, I don't. I don't use them, and we do tens of millions of dollars on Google Ads.、Um, so really, your account will teach you. The keyword planner is just to start a foundation. You know what I mean?、Mm -hmm. Once the foundation's there, like you saw in Ronaldo's account,、mm -hmm. you can see the search terms that people are searching, and then、mm -hmm. from there, that's what your data is based off of. So keyword planner is just like a baseline. It's like Uh, you know, pouring the cement on the bottom of the house, but you still have to build the house with all the bricks, and the bricks are going to be your search terms and your negative keywords and the things that people are actually doing,、um, not just an estimate of what people are doing. Okay, thank you. Yep.、Uh, just letting you guys know, I gotta go in like two minutes because I have a, a call. But next week's call, I'll I'll probably extend it out more than an hour,、um, especially since we're going to be going through Google Ads and things like that. Uh, it just happens. This is the first call, and I had something kind of already on schedule after it. But、uh, moving forward, I'll kind of make sure to leak some time a little bit over for you guys, unless I have something urgent.、Um, so, is there any question that can be answered, like in like a minute or two, that we can get out the way before I leave? Yeah,、uh, I don't have any questions.、Uh, so, I do like the marketing for contractors, like full contractors,、uh, mostly. Uh, mm -hmm. But、uh, right now, I'm just doing Facebook ads and just a simple lead form. Uh, but I do want to add AdWords as my service, and I have no clue how to how to do AdWords at all. So I'm just、like、looking forward to our coaching calls. Well, just make sure you're not、um, sure、in a car、um, next week. Okay. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just uh, yeah, and and just, if you guys、uh, want to get ahead of the curve, by the, the way, curve. it's echoing through your car. Yeah, it's echoing. I'm gonna mute you,、car. but I'm gonna talk gonna to you still. You. Um, if you guys、uh, are attending next week's call, make sure to go on Google beforehand. Start a Google Ads account because it's going to require you to put a credit card and stuff like that. So, like, get that all out the way. Even if you're not going to spend money on it, just get it out the way, set it up, so that on next week's call we're going over things. I know you can rewatch the recording, but it's different when you're clicking things and you're like, "Oh, what does this thing do? What does this thing do?" And then that way we can all kind of engage actively, and you guys have a new account set up so that you know I can get those questions answered and teach you guys some cool tricks that you can apply while we're on the call instead of instead of waiting till later.、Um, High ticket kitchen, bathroom, house renovation—that's the best thing for Google, Parker. I I used to run Google ads for entire basement renovations that were like sixty to a hundred grand each, and they would kill it.、Um, so definitely, definitely, where people are going to be searching. Last thing, Eddie, for GMB services,、um, do you recommend that for contractors as well? Uh, Google My Business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dude, I recommend it for everyone. Awesome. Like, you know how, we, dude, even even for you guys, I recommend it. Like. Uh, honestly, like you know how easy it is for us when customers are like,、uh, "I want to see testimonials," and I'm like, "We have 45 star Google reviews. Go look at those." Instead of sitting here trying to like ask my customers for testimonials and videos and stuff like that, and then they go and they're like, they read everything. It's just like it's on Google. It's not like some website that I made up and screenshotted some stuff on. It's like, dude, go check our Google. Here's our listing. Love it. You know? Love it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a benefit for everyone, dude. At the end of the day. Cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I really, really am so grateful for everyone here. Thank you so much.、Um, you know, just come next week with that foundation on Google Ads being set up, and then we'll go through some stuff and get a little more technical next week, and、uh, see how this develops over time.、Uh, so happy to be here for you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Take care, guys. See you.